Winthrop University was founded in Columbia, South Carolina in 1886, and the original institution was based in what we call the Little Chapel, which has been rebuilt behind this campus now. A decision was made in 1893 to move Winthrop to the upstate from Columbia, and so cities vied for that honor and Rock Hill won the contest. A former president of Winthrop University said that was the best investment that Rock Hill ever made, and certainly I feel that way because Rock Hill and Winthrop have been good for each other. And so Winthrop came to Rock Hill, and one of the first things that happened here on Oakland Avenue was the building of Main Building, which we call Tillman Hall today. And that began in 1894. It is a magnificent structure, as we all know. It was built by convicts who were detailed here from Columbia. 310 of these hardy workers came from Columbia from the penitentiary and they were based here on this new campus, this new home of Winthrop University. And so they constructed Tillman Hall and they worked all through 1894. And then finally, in the autumn of 1895, they unveiled the masterpiece of what we call Tillman Hall. Cadets came from Clemson and, and the community turned out in a huge show of support for its institution because Winthrop had come to where it is now, Rock Hill. And Tillman Hall, which I had the opportunity early in my career here at Winthrop to take a guided tour of Tillman Hall that was led by Bill Culp, who was a fixture on campus. He had been born on campus. He had served in World War II and never really left Winthrop and kind of was here most of his life. He took me and my daughter on a guided tour of that structure. And so we went down in the basement and we looked at the old swimming pool. As you may be aware, you could not graduate from Winthrop in the early days unless you could prove that you could swim. And so that's where the students who were all female at that time had to pass the test and they had to swim. So there's a swimming pool in the basement of Tillman Hall. Also, there are stocks down there where those workers, those criminals who were detailed here to build that structure, if they got in trouble, they were disciplined and placed in the stocks, and the stocks remain in Tillman Hall. And then as you tour Tillman and you go up the steps, you'll see the auditorium. The auditorium is where David Bancroft Johnson the first president who was president of this institution during its Columbia days in 1886 till his death in 1928. Every week, David Bancroft Johnson would meet with his girls, as he called them, the Winthrop student body, and he would lecture them about what the mission of the school was. And so he would stand there on the stage of that wonderful auditorium in Tillman Hall. And I remember that Bill Culp took my daughter and myself into that auditorium. It is still an excellent, excellent addition to the campus. And then if you go up the steps and you keep going to where classrooms were at one time, Kynard Hall was not built until the 1930s. And so just about everything that happened on this campus happened in main building, which we call Tillman Hall. And so there were classrooms there. And the classrooms are always fun to visit because you get a sense of how the students of Winthrop during the early days were determined that they were going to master not just the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but they were going to prepare themselves to be educators. And so that went on in those classrooms in Tillman Hall in the upper levels. And then when you go out on the roof of Tillman Hall, which Bill Culp took my daughter and myself out on, if you go out on the roof, and now that's pretty much hard to do, but if you go out on the roof and you go near where the clock is and you look off in the distance, you can almost see Charlotte off in the distance. And so certainly when you come to Winthrop, it is always the center of your attention is that great building that changed its name in the 1960s from Main Building to Tillman Hall in honor of Benjamin Ryan Tillman, who worked with D.B. Johnson to make sure that they found an upstate South Carolina city for the home of Winthrop University.